Welcome back. I'm here with the wonderful Jessica Ennis. Ladies and gentlemen, she's still here. She was just saying uh, a second ago to me that uh, your dog has won the medal. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it was wearing a down. I think it was. <laughs> I think she looks a bit depressed. <laughs> Happy, That's lovely. You know, uh, we're going to bring out another one of our fabulous uh, Olympic stars, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look at him in action. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Cute eruption. He has done it again. Yes, get in. That's the one that we wanted. That's the one that we got. Oh, my goodness, me. Here he is, it's Mr. Tom Daly, ladies and gentlemen. I was yeah. just saying to Jessica, the medals, uh, I've interviewed various Olympic athletes over the years, who've had medals, and previously the ones I've seen were much smaller. These seem to be bigger than in previous years, is that right? Yeah, they are massive, and they are definitely a lot heavier than the other medals they as well, really, so yeah. yeah. But congratulations, Thank fabulous you. achievement. Uh, and especially after the start, it was a bit of a sticky start for you in the Olympics. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, the Drama. first week that synchro dive, and there was a mistake, I believe. Yeah, well, in the synchro event, we finished four. <laughs> That never oh. fails to get a laugh, does it? Yeah, well, there you go. That's the strange of face goes I'm there. always tempted to Photoshop in a couple of toilets underneath both of you, though. Just like that. <laughs> well, it beats a facelift anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> it does it? work. So, it's yeah. right back there. Uh, so, so it was the bald guy's fault, was it? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no not at all, no. It was just one of those things that we missed one of our dives and then you can't afford to miss a dive like that in that kind of standard competition, so we finished fourth, but it gave me that extra motivation to want to do well in the individual, so, yeah, I'm glad I've got something finally to show for all the hard work, effort, well, dedication. Well, it's a fabulous achievement. But I was going to ask you whether going into the solo event after that, whether there, there was so much more tension because you'd got so close in the synchro. Oh, definitely. There was, there was piles of pressure. Jess will tell you the, the pressure going into the competition. Like, I was always telling myself, no, there was no pressure. You just, it doesn't bother you. You focus on your competition. But deep down, yes, there is a lot of pressure. But the only thing that you can do when you're in those situations is give it your best shot, do or die, really. When you, uh, when you first started your first dive in the solo event, uh, yeah. you, you were allowed to redo it. Yes. Because of, uh, this, was, this was quite a rare event, I believe, in the sport, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've never had to perform a re-dive in a competition before. It's quite a dramatic start to an Olympic final, the first time to do it in an Olympic final. So, basically what happened was I was still on the end of the board and there was some flash photography. Thought to ignore it, uh, but as soon as I took off, it felt like the whole stadium just literally flashed in my face. Not literally flashing in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have put anyone off. Exactly. Let's face it. Tell me about it. But as you do twisting dives and you twist towards an audience and there's flashes, it can disorientate you because you're not used to seeing it in training. I know. I got disorientated <laughs> and ended up with scoring 73 points. I talked to the referee and he was just like, okay, there was a significant amount of flashes and go up and do a re-dive and luckily it was 20 points better. So, so you're up there, you're alone essentially on yeah. that diving board and it's a dangerous pursuit. I mean, you know, I know that you do get scared up there a little bit, don't you? Yeah, I get scared every time I'm up there because a 10 metre board is the height of two double decker buses and half a car all piled on top of each other. So it's a long way up and I get scared every time I'm up there. I've hit my head twice. So yeah, things like that, it's always in the back of your mind. Because when the dive goes right, how close are you to the, to the board when you're going there? In theory, you want to try and get around about that close to the board. Um, if, you so get, if you're too you're far away from that, then you get marked down. If you're too close, you also get marked down and you also probably smack your face on the board. So they're looking even, at every, they're even looking how close you are to the board when you go down? Everything. The judges look at the takeoff, the speed rotation, making sure you've got your toes pointed. <laughs> you know, so, well, that's, he's not a judge, of course, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. He's one of Britain's favourite comedy characters. But uh, <laughs> I, I love Boris, but how difficult was it for you to resist pushing him in when he was up there? <laughs> It took a lot of willpower, Tom, I imagine. Oh, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting actually taking him up there. I've never heard him, like, blubber so much in my Ooh, life. Yeah. Oh, you know, and you he can blubbers imagine. a lot anyway, yeah, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. blubber, blubber. Yeah. <laughs> He's nowhere near the edge, is he? He's about six feet back on that yeah. thing. Yeah, he wouldn't go to the edge. He wanted to hold on to the handrail, but he managed to look over the edge, so yeah. Of course, you're 18. Yes. Now. And here's an exciting thing happened this week is that, uh, and for many kids, it was a terrible day. For other kids, a great day. But it's the day that the exam results came in. You got your A-level results. Yeah, I got my A-level results this morning. And overall, I'm on for photography A-star, Spanish A and maths A. So. Wow. <laughs> Three A's. Three A's. That's incredible. Thank you. 
Wow. Hard work, but you wow. get there if you work at it. Wow. Well, my son got an A and two Bs. I was really proud, but he didn't win one medal, the lazy little bugger. <laughs> So I'm going to have to have words when I get home with him. <laughs> it's all about time management. Yeah. Um, can I, I, I want to ask you something serious yes. here. Uh, because every, obviously it's an incredible achievement. But for you, and I think everyone uh, felt this way, for you to go out there and manage to do that this year, yeah. after you lost your father so recently, yeah. a remarkable thing. Did that make it so much harder for you? Or was there something about doing it for him that, that in yeah. a way you could focus on that? Well, well, yeah, like you said, I lost my dad last year to a brain tumour and it was, yeah, it's been the toughest 18 months of my life trying to get ready for the competition, focusing on the Olympics, focusing on A-levels and not having my dad there to sort of support me through it. But my family and my friends have been so supportive and to get there into the Olympics, obviously, it's, I'm gutted that he wasn't there to watch it. Um, but because that was all that he ever talked about. But it was good that all my family and friends were there and definitely, yeah, all the hard work that we put in together when I was younger got me an Olympic medal. But what a fabulous thing to have achieved. Exactly. It's, it's great to have found all the hard work, all the effort and the sacrifice, and it's good that my family have finally got some good news. Uh, you know, um, it's delightful to see you with the medal there. And in the book, I know you talk about your dad a lot, of yeah. course, and I've got the book here. And the book is, there's not many 18-year-olds whose autobiography I would recommend you read, <laughs> but I would recommend this one because <laughs> this, this is a life story worth reading. But there's one thing in particular I love in this, uh, which is this thing, I know you've spoken a little about this, but there's this picture. And once again, this brings me back to your dad, because your dad, I believe, told yeah. you there was a chance that uh, we may well have the Olympics here one day. Yes. This was before the bid had officially gone in, I believe. Yeah, before the bid had gone in. It was a candidate city and, yeah. Candidate city. And young Tom, how old were you when you did this? Nine. He was nine. He went upstairs and I'll be honest, even for a nine-year-old, it's not a very good drawing. But he went upstairs <laughs> and... <laughs> he drew this, this picture and it's so lovely. Look at this. It says, my ambition... And, uh, you could, and it says, of course, London 2012, London 2012. And there's, that's you, I guess. Yeah, that was before the candidate city, well, before it was announced that it was in London, and before I'd gone to Olympic Games, before I'd done the national championships, anything, and that was my dream, that's what I visualised, and that's what I did. And it came through. Yeah, it came through. And you got the medal. It's yeah. incredible, isn't it? Incredible. OK, um, let me ask you about the trunks, OK? Yes. Because I think we'd all like to talk to you about your trunks. Um, <laughs> they're pretty small. Yeah, they do are. They, do they have to be that small? I, I mean, don't know, do they? I don't know. Yeah. I, well, to be honest, I, I you've got it's, more a, it's, a, it's a lovely image, ladies and gentlemen. I know everyone, and it's a, he's a fine figure of a young man, but they're, they're, I mean, I've got a pair here. And I mean, look. <laughs> <that> is, <laughs> I mean, that's just wrong, Tom, isn't it? Yeah, I definitely <laughs> wouldn't fit into those. I'm I'm barely afraid. get my hand here. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was a video that you uh, released yeah. last year that came out and people gave you a hard time and said you're not taking your training seriously. Yeah. You know the video I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking you're about. Any, you yeah. know the video I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For those who don't, enjoy this. I think it's a, it's a lovely celebration of being young and in great shape, okay? Yeah. I've lost eight kilos since then, though, so... Wow. <laughs> I've been fat in this one. <laughs> don't say that. How does that make the rest of us feel? <laughs> You might notice it. Okay, I'm well, have a look you at it. You'll see now. Look at old Porky in this. You'll be <laughs> saying this. I'm sexy and I know it. <laughs> I see what you mean, you fat bastard. <laughs> There's nothing of you. <laughs> wow. It's like just yeah, muscle. There you go. Uh, here's the thing about sports, which always fascinates me, is, you know, you, you, you have to dedicate yourself to it 100% to achieve mm. what you've both achieved. Um, but you, there's only a, a certain window. How, how much longer do you have? How much longer can you keep that level of focus up? How much longer can your body mm. allow you to compete at the level you're competing at now? How, what are your plans? Are you, you're going to stick around for the next one? You've got four years more? Yeah, you think, I think Jessica? as soon as I finish, everyone was like, right, you're going to Rio. Mm. <laughs> and it's yeah. kind of like, you've not really thought about it. But, um, yeah, it just depends how long your body can deal with the stress of training. Obviously, mm. with the heptathlon, it's a, it's a lot of force going through the body. So it just depends when your body says, you know, that's enough. But I try and go for as long as possible. Well, I can't wait to see you both in action again. It was so exciting to see you do that. And congratulations again. All of us would like to say congratulations and thank you for, thank you for winning.
for the country and for yourselves. Tom Daly and Jessica Ennis, ladies and gentlemen. OK, we've got to take a break now. When we return, I'll be talking to the start of one of the summer's biggest Hollywood blockbusters. That's Mr Colin Fowler. Don't go away.